My name is Amanda Carino. I'm a mother of two girls, Abigail, she's almost seven, and I have Elena, she's gonna be four coming up in January. The pandemic was something that was a huge curveball. We had to go virtually and I'm now juggling them at home. I felt, I think that was my hardest struggle. Then there was parts where she had to quote unquote respond and being with a computer, you know, she's not able to type. Who had to do all that work? Me, I had to upload the videos, upload the pictures. That way the teacher could see that we were participating in the work. Do fish make sounds? Where do you see the fishies? Just, there's things in a classroom that set up the child for success just to have different learning experiences and unfortunately I didn't have that here. I mean, I really tried, you know, to have at least a pencil and paper to let's draw for a couple of minutes, but it's still not the same interaction or, so, or social time she could have had in the classroom. That was probably the hardest part about virtual school is just not having the classroom environment which is more contained and you can kind of focus more on the teaching and learning. I think the digital divide is definitely a real thing unfortunately and I think that in, in order for us to ensure equity that we need to really change the definition of what public education is to include the mandatory access to all things uh, digital. I think that students should, when upon registering for public school, that they should be issued with a computing device that is theirs to keep. Once the pandemic hit, we got a donation of, um, I can't remember, maybe 140, 150 um, Chromebooks in order to, to serve each and every one of our students. You know, in today's world, um, it's, it, you, we look at it and we wouldn't think that um, you have families that may not have um, internet access, but you know, we unfortunately we did have some, and you know, they were able to come to us and we were able to help them out with that issue. Um, unfortunately, you know, in our community, is there's not a heavy emphasis on computer technology. You have to make sure that you provide for your family. Sometimes they, you know, as a family and as a community, you can fall behind. Communication here is key. If a student, you know, uh, had a issue with their computer or if they needed a hotspot or if you know the internet connection at their home was an issue that open communication really made it so that we could fix that within the day it was a couple families that you know I went out make sure I provided them with um, their Chromebooks if they couldn't make it due to the pandemic or you know they couldn't make it from work or whatsoever also we provided each family that needed um, a, a Wi-Fi in the 21st century it is absolutely a right for everyone to have access to all digital technology I think some solutions for closing that digital divide is to make people aware just educate people on how difficult it is and, and to let them know that there really are families out there that don't have access to this the biggest takeaway from last school year was just the support from administration, technology, our amazing parents. We all had to work together to make virtual learning a success. The other takeaway is how adaptable and resilient our scholars are. They amazed me every single day. They stayed strong. They showed learning gains. Our parents did an excellent job of embracing it, understanding, and working with us as a, um, as a, as a team and as a community. I think that's one of the great things that came out of this is that we really are in a technological world and students and parents alike just almost had to learn these things. If it happens now, as a school, we are prepared. We are prepared and I know that our parents are prepared. I think having to go fully on computer really did help my daughter. She definitely learned some computer skills because of this transition.